not going to put up any more today, I don't think. I, I'm not sure this is doing me any good anyway. I've told on the other, I've put up two or three, I can't remember at the moment, because I can't get very much on it. I give background, and, and then the tape's gone all over again before I make the point. I told about Victor Gonzalez, the doctor, psychiatrist, that was at Parkland in Dallas when John Kennedy, who, by the way, helped kidnap me, his dad and uh, his dad was ambassador to London, and I was kidnapped in 41 and brought to Moulton, Alabama, to this hell's old family. She killed her twins, and uh, they covered it up and gave me that name, and I grew up not knowing it. I did the book, MD License to Kill. Victor Gonzalez was a part of it, and I, uh, some other doctors. Uh, Larry McDonald, congressman, doctor, later. He's the one here that Larry Flint, spoke of, and um, I was flown out there doing a campaign to replace Larry McDonald when his plane was shot down, the passenger plane KAL on August the 31st of 83. Now, I'm trying to rush through here because I want to get to this part. They put antifreeze in me, and I thought it was because of the book, because I didn't know about being kidnapped till 83 after I was out at Flint's, and the Brits told me. And that's the so-called, quote, uh, close relationship with the United States. The United States kidnapped me, the monarch, Victoria II, took down my father, Edward VIII, a beautiful man. That's why they took him down. His own brother helped. And um, my father was married to Claudia O'Keefe, a uh, teacher, born in a, uh, Madison, Wisconsin. She's Irish Catholic. And this is Georgia, my aunt, the artist. So the whole thing was a lie, and you go into history and you'll see nothing but lies about my father. You won't see a mention of me. A 99-year seal should have alerted somebody. So where is this freedom of speech and freedom of press? I've taken stuff to them. They knew about my kidnapping before I did in 83. I've taken the mind control murders that I've written about and that have kept on going. I had a letter from the FBI I'm just going to put you a couple of them here. Virginia Tech next door to me. Uh, Fort Hood shooter finished school there and went on to medical somewhere else. Uh, but uh, he was born here in Roanoke, uh, Vinton. That's where the 83 mass shootings happened in April of uh, 16th, I believe, of 07. Yeah, and you've got the Aurora, Colorado, Columbine, Sandy Hook, these are mind control murders. And the people uh, like Aurora, Colorado, James Holmes, they're calling it, uh, they're insane, treating them with psychotic drugs when it's the most hor one of the most horrific crimes can ever be told. Uh, it's, they're not mentally ill. You have to stop the programming. If they don't have any power over it or even know they're getting it. This is JFK's daughter with Obama. She is ambassador to Japan. So all these people, none of them have paid for the crimes. They've gotten away with it. I'm still sitting here trying to live, wondering if my kids are alive. They're heir after me. This is Mark and Scott. It's an old photo. The mind control murders that, that were happening back then that I was writing about, continued, and that's what I've been telling, that this is the Boston bomber. Now then, this is Mark Kelly, a twin to Scott Kelly. Remember, they brought me over and gave me the name of a twin that was dead, and um, their mother killed them, and it was a cover-up. Now then, this is, uh, my sons are the heirs, Mark and Scott, they're 11 and a half months apart. I have no idea where they are. I pray that one thing that keep me keeps me alive is that they're alive and I get to see them again. They're my babies. I was my dad's mom's baby. Look what his own brother, this woman. 
they're illegal, so I'm going to get off of that with the, the mind control. So I get this on here, baby. The mind control um, murders were part of it. it was Tucson. And uh, Mark Kelly and Scott Kelly are twins. They're astronauts. And Mark was married to Gabby Gifford. And she was a congresswoman that was shot and 12 killed there at Tucson. So uh, now I wanted to go into Martin Luther King Day. I didn't know about my kidnapping until 83, late 83, and who my parents are and who I am, Victoria the Second, heir to the British Grant. This so-called close relationship that Great Britain has with the United States, friends, the heck, they kidnapped me, the monarch, they took down my father, they illegally put their bases on British soil. I call that hostage taking. I know it is. That's what I am, and that's what the Brits have been. How dare you, uh, America? My God. Oh, please. Let me get to this, though. After I had the antifreeze, if you care to go back, anybody can go back, because I'll tell you what an FBI agent said to me. He pretended to be yawning. He says, you know what they do with what you're telling them? You bore them. It's only when they find out how it affects them. I was telling about mind control. Didn't know about my kidnapping at the time. And I, now then, it's so updated, the mind control, they can uh, mind control use mind control on armies. So there you go. That's what's going on now. And how do you prove it? It's invisible. Well, you can with some of the stuff that deliberately was done that I've told about. But uh, if I can get back to the Martin Luther King before this goes off now. After the antifreeze had been put in me, and I was like John Lennon. I was forever in this bleeding heart. And I've never, thank God, lost my ability to empathize and care. I would never want to do that. I've just learned what people have done that I give a, very much cared for. In, um, you get Andrew Young was appointed by Jimmy Carter, ambassador to the UN, who did all this stuff about Africa and South Africa and all that. And now then, uh, Af Africa's gone. Uh, who do you think sent in the Ebola and the AIDS virus? Center for Disease Control did. And I put part of this, uh, that hadn't happened at the time the AIDS was happening. I mentioned them and Emory in my book at university. So anyway, the whole thing was to take get down Great Britain, uh, and they've uh, installed a new world order, the UN. Andrew Young was with Martin Luther King when he was shot, and that was mind control was used on the man that shot was supposed to shot have shot him, just like George Wallace was with this woman Lana Dempsey. Not a friend of hers. She worked in the campaign in Laurel, Maryland, when he was shot. George Wallace, as far as I'm concerned, was a very decent man, and you couldn't buy his soul like everybody else's if they had a soul. Now I want to get back to uh, after the antifreeze had been put in me, I had a letter from the FBI, all this. I'm on the street where I'd had a home, and it was cold, and I had flip-flops on. I went to Mrs. King's office there downtown in the condition I was in, living on the street, and she wouldn't see me. Finally, I wouldn't leave, and I was afraid the police would lock me up. And uh, they, um, um, she sent somebody out there since I didn't leave. He took me outside <laughs> where it was cold, wouldn't even talk to me. And, they, and he, this is what he said, we know about mind control. Um, he called him a doctor. I don't know what kind of doctor. He said he was from Rhodesia. And you get into this, and there's been name changes, but this was um, colonies, British colonies. So this whole thing, I'm the monarch, the legitimate monarch, not this woman, the sorry thing. Uh, they gave away Great Britain and stole my money, and uh, her father helped in the nine-nine-year takedown. My dad, when he was married to my mom, uh, Claudia O'Keefe, the whole thing, I'm Victoria the Second. Oh, here he is, right here. That's Martin Luther King. He knew, I found out later, this is what the man they sent out to talk to me, the black man down at uh, town in Atlanta, that the new, he knew that they knew about mind control, and this doctor had gone to the dentist and got a chip put in him, 
he didn't know it, but he came back. He was black, and he came back, and he took a flying leap into the wall, and it busted his jaw.